Jamaica was the happiest island in all the Caribbean. Kingston was in holiday mood, and the whole population hung out the flags and metaphorically threw its hat in the air. They rejoiced, not that they were parting from Britain, they are firm adherents of the crown, but because Jamaica stood on the threshold of independence. And then it rained. A tropical downpour, as inappropriate as our own deluge on bank holiday. But nature relented, and as though to bid welcome, out came the sun as the airliner touched down at Palisados Airport, bringing to represent the Queen Princess Margaret. Independence was to have a royal greeting. There to welcome the princess and her husband was the governor, Sir Kenneth Blackburn, and the veteran prime minister, Sir Alexander Bustamante. After the greeting of Lady Blackburn, it was the turn of the premier to bid Her Royal Highness a loyal welcome. Then Princess Margaret was conducted to the saluting base to receive the royal salute by the Jamaica Regiment. The 12-mile drive from the airport and through Kingston gave thousands the opportunity they had long awaited to express their own greeting in unmistakable manner. At the entrance to King's House, the princess spoke to some disabled children. Among them were girl guides and boy scouts. They are crippled, but they were not forgotten. The royal visitor had a word, too, with the woman in charge of them. Next day, Her Royal Highness opened the great national stadium, which nobly expresses the pride and hope of the new nation. Sir Alexander Bustamante received the princess and Lord Snowden and conducted them to the royal box. This was the place where, at midnight on the following day, the flag of independent Jamaica would be raised. Princess Margaret said it was fitting that the country would serve as host for the ninth Central American and Caribbean Games. And after the applause came the emotional rendering of the Jamaican national anthem. The stage was now taken by the young people. Jamaica's youth organizations had heard the princess say that the country's future rested with their generation. They made it look as if that future would be in good hands. One spectator who had been among the prime movers in achieving independence was the opposition leader, Norman Manley. Two minutes to midnight, Sunday, August the 5th, the birth of Jamaican independence. The new flag was about to be hoisted over the stadium. Sir Kenneth Blackburn was soon to be Governor General, the higher rank in accord with the new status of Jamaica as full member of the Commonwealth. It is likely that before long he will be succeeded by a Jamaican, and who better than the 78-year-old Sir Alexander Bustamante. It was another historic day for the emergent nation that saw the state opening of Parliament. The motto chosen for the new coat of arms is, out of many, one people. And here on the Westminster model, will sit the Democratic Assembly who will govern the multiracial million and three quarters who will become one people. On this moving occasion, it was Princess Margaret's privilege to represent Her Majesty the Queen. And as always, when such duty falls to her, she now performed it with a grace and dignity befitting the responsibility. In their places for the inauguration sat the 66 members of the Senate and House of Representatives. Visitors included the papal envoy and dignitaries from independent African states. It 
It now fell to the Prime Minister to receive from the Queen's representative the constitutional instruments of Jamaican independence and to convey to the Princess the speech from the throne in which the Queen congratulated all who had guided Jamaica to her new status and expressed hope in the nation's future progress and prosperity. The Prime Minister's address of thanks was seconded by the leader of the opposition, Mr. Norman Manley. The first session of Parliament of Independent Jamaica was open. It followed the pattern of Westminster, the mother of parliaments, from which democracy has spread and flowered in so many lands. 300 years of British government had come to an end. And peacefully, one more nation had been helped to achieve its yearning for self-government. All wish well to the happy people of independent Jamaica.